Mark, and thank you for all your work in defending jobs and conditions of all employees in the higher education and university sectors. Thank you very much. I'd like you now to give a very warm welcome to Selim Gafur, a YouTube sensation, a political commentator, one that is using the media to get a message of peace and justice across. Please give a very warm welcome, Selim Gafur. Shorts and have to adjust it. Right, if anyone tells you the war on Afghanistan was about liberating women, slap them. Slap them with a shovel, slap them with a sledgehammer, just slap them. After 10 years of war in, the, of, in Afghanistan to liberate the women of Afghanistan, uh, I think it's safe to say it was a giant flop because now Afghanistan is one of the worst places in the world to be a woman. So, one giant flop. They have the audacity to label it as um, Operation Enduring Freedom. I find that quite hilarious. It's like a paedophile labelling his mission as Operation Children's Rights. So if 9-11 uh, taught us anything, it should have taught us the sanctity of human life, not how to bomb the shit out of Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, dropping drones in Somalia, dropping drones in Pakistan. So 74% of the British public believe the war on terror cannot be won. The other 26% are probably idiots thinking that you can win a war on, against an emotion that's just stupid. I think they're most likely to be EDL members. So before Matt taps me, um, I just want to say, I was nine years old when the uh, war on, on Afghanistan happened. Um, I, I was lucky in that I didn't suffer at all. I was in England, did nothing happen to me. But in Afghanistan there are children younger than me who every single day, all they've known is bombs, all they've known is drones. The war has gone on for too long. Too many people have been killed. It's been 10 years since the invasion of Afghanistan, and that's 10 years too many. I'll end in an EDL fashion and say, I'm on a march, right? Because I want Afghanistan to be about Afghans. Cheers. Thank you very, very much indeed. I now have the easy job of asking you to recognize there are some buckets traveling around the crowd at the present time. This event has cost a lot of money to put on. Stop the War Coalition spends all that we receive, and unfortunately we spend more than we receive. In other words, we're in debt. So we're no, no different to the government, we're no different to every, every other public authority. We're in debt. No fess up, we're in debt. Can you help us get out of debt? David Cameron says debt's a bad thing. Well, he's got his way of paying off the debt, we've got ours. Our way of paying off the debt is invest in people, in public services, in jobs, in communities. Our way of paying for that, in part, is to cancel trade, stop the expenditure on wars, and stop the waste of wars and the lives that go with it. So, so Stop the War Coalition needs a little bit of help to achieve that. So as the buckets go round, please give as generously as you can. If you're able to, sign standing orders, direct debits or whatever, please do that also. And if you can get your union, community group, whatever you're in, to affiliate to Stop the War Coalition, so much the better. Imagine how weak we would have been if we hadn't founded the Stop the War Coalition 10 years ago to give the alternative voice to all that unity down there in Parliament that voted for Afghanistan, Libya, Iraq and all the other wars. We are the alternative voice in the square. Please give all you can to Stop the War Coalition today. Thank you very much. Next speaker is he's here. Yes, sorry, I'm slightly confused. I'm looking to stage left. Um, by the way, before I call him up, there are, is a um, petition being signed over there for Shakar Ahmed, who is still stuck in Guantanamo Bay. Please go over to the store. It's over there by the blue brain and sign the petition. The next speaker is a great friend, great campaigner within the community, and done a lot to mobilize Muslim youth in this country. Please give a very warm welcome, Anas al Thank you Brothers, sisters, friends, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you all. Ten years ago, we came here 
and we declared that any war, any attack against Afghanistan will never be in our name. At the time, the government and our detractors accused us that we didn't want for the Afghan people what we enjoy and take for granted ourselves. They accused us that we did not want them to live in a state of democracy. They accused us that we did not want for them freedom, liberty, that we did not want for their children proper education, that we did not want for their women liberation and freedom. That's what they accuse us of. Ten years on, Afghanistan has no security. Afghanistan has no freedom. Afghanistan's women have no liberty. There is no democracy. Terrorism and violence is still rife. The drug trade is still booming. That is the state of affairs ten years on. Brothers and sisters, let us never allow this to happen. Let us never allow that no accountability happens. Let us never allow this to go away as though it was an, a judgment error. Let us never allow those who made the decision to kill hundreds of thousands of innocent Afghanis to go without being held to account. Brothers and sisters, we live in different times ten years on. We now see a shifting, a changing landscape and a changing terrain. The barren land of the Arab world has moved and mobilized. People are now rising because we, the anti-war movement in the West and here in Britain, gave them the inspiration that coming together, raising their voices, can change their realities. We saw what happened in Tunis, we saw what happened in Egypt. Let's make absolutely sure and absolutely clear that the people who rise against their dictators never ever have to resort to asking for the West to intervene. Let's make absolutely sure to stand side by side by our Syrian brothers and Yemeni brothers so that they never ever have to ask for the intervention of NATO, Britain, America or anyone else, but they change their realities by themselves. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Anas, and thank you for all your work over all these years, and it's going to continue for a long time to come. Um, I've had a message from my good friend John McDonnell, MP for Hazel Harlington, who was supposed to be speaking this morning. He's speaking at a conference in Liverpool on workers' rights and uh, trade union issues in Liverpool. He said in Sod's Law that he's been put on to speak earlier at that conference and the trains are still not fast enough to get from here to Liverpool in time. He sends his support and solidarity. We thank John for his votes in Parliament and his work for peace over all these years. John, thank you very, very much for that. The final speaker for this session, I want to say a really big thank you to him. Andrew Murray chaired the Stop the War Coalition for 10 years and has just stepped down as chair. Not because he's given up, not because he's going away, but because he's got other things to do which take up a great deal of time. As Chief of Staff at Unite the Union, which is playing such a brilliant role in opposing the cuts and supporting the Stop the War Coalition, and he's also become a member of the TUC General Council. Andrew has many qualifications and many attributes, and I want to thank him for all he's done, the way he's held the Stop the War Coalition together, chaired the meetings and the effort he's made, and of course, the other great qualification he has is a, is a resident of Islington North. What more can you ask in life? Andrew Murray. Good cage over there, it's our prison. Thank you very much indeed, Jeremy. Uh, and it's been an honour for me, let me say, to have been chair of this fantastic movement, the Stop the War Coalition, for the last ten years. It's also an honour to be able to bring you greetings today from Unite the Union and from our General Secretary, Len McCluskey. Uh, and also, in a way, on behalf of the TUC, because the TUC uh, agreed at its conference last month to call for the immediate withdrawal of the troops from Afghanistan and declared itself against the war on terror. And can I only say that line mark from the UCU, I hope the next time the British government is contemplating an illegal war of aggression, the trade union movement will use its power to stop that war before it starts.
And I just want to use my couple of minutes to send three messages. The first is to David Cameron. David Cameron, you know that the war in Afghanistan is a disastrous and criminal failure. Every diplomat, every general, every commentator tells you so. You know that the lives that have been lost there are lives being lost in vain. So let me just ask you first of all, what are you going to say to the families of the soldiers that will die in Afghanistan in the next three or four years just because they're dying to save NATO's face? How will you justify men? maintaining this occupation to them. And the second question for David Cameron is this. How come your big society is big enough to bomb Libya, big enough to occupy Afghanistan, but too small to keep open a care centre, too small to keep open the local library? And my next message is to one particular person. Tony Blair, enjoy your money from JP Morgan, Enjoy yourself baptising the next generation of Murdochs while you can. Because there is not enough water in the River Jordan to wash the blood off your hands and the time will come when you answer for that at the Hague. And my final message after 10 years is to the people of Iraq, the people of Afghanistan and the people of Libya. I believe that one day a British government will apologise to you and make some reparation.